Let's talk about cortisol. There's another claim floating around online that goes something like cold plunges raises cortisol and since women are more sensitive to cortisol they should not cold plunge. And that is not true. Let's get clear on the facts. What actually happens to cortisol during a cold plunge or cold water immersion? Cortisol only increases temporarily. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It's not just bad, it's essential. It helps us actually wake up in the morning and deal with challenges. It saves us when we are in danger and it regulates our inflammation and keep energy levels stable. It rises when the body is uh, faced with a stressor and that could in fact be cold water immersion. That is a stressor. So yes, during the initial immersion, when you are especially new to cold water immersions and you've not done this before, cold water, cold plunges or winter swimming or yeah, it has different names. It's been, it's, it's, it has different names depending on how you use it. But essentially we are doing the same, submerging the human body into cold water. So there is a temporary spike in the cortisol levels when you are new to this as part of the sympathetic nervous system activation. Uh, which is also called the fight and flight system. So this is the same system that gets activated when you exercise or give a public speech or uh, yeah, like that. But there are more uh, nuances that matters. That spike doesn't last and more importantly, it's followed by a rebound into the, the parasympathetic activation, meaning the rest and the digest system. So this shift is, um, is exactly what makes cold plunging such a powerful tool for the nervous system regulation. So we are going to use that. So just to be clear on what the cortisol does, I'll go through some studies on cortisol and cold water immersion. Several studies show that uh, cold water immersion, so for two to three minutes, can reduce the baseline cortisol over time. The initial spike that we see for newbies is not a problem, it's like a mini stress rehearsal for your uh, nervous system. And the more you repeat it and, and, and go into the cold water, the more resilient and regulated your system becomes. It actually knows what you are doing, it recognizes it, and the cortisol will not spike through the roof anymore. In fact, this is why cold exposure is increasingly used in therapies, for example, in anxiety, depression and PTSD uh, and chronic stress, because it helps the body practice shifting from the sympathetic nervous system activation to the parasympathetic uh, response so, uh, activation. But this is of course a big one, but there is a but and, um, and context matters. If someone is on full-on burnout mode, running on fumes with a completely dysregulated system, cold plunging might not be the right move just yet. Just like you wouldn't go to the gym with the flu, you don't want to add more stress to the body, even the good stress, to a system that already is uh, tapped out. It doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman in this, in this case, if you have a burnout or you, if you are at the peak of stress, cold plunging could feel like a shock too far. So on those cases, the best thing you can do is just rest. Once the body starts coming out of that emergency mode, that's when cold plunging can become a tool for recovery and not a stressor anymore. When you're using cold plunging to reset a dysregulated nervous system, more is not always better. Actually, I haven't found a reason why more should be better, so I'll just keep saying the same. <laughs> so start very short, 30 to 60 seconds is enough to signal the system and begin the swift. Focus on the breath. The exhale is your entry point into the parasympathetic state. Breathe through the cold shock and let your body learn that it is safe to do this. Stay consistent, regular small doses train your system better than infrequent um, extremes. So just consistency is very important. Watch your state afterward. If you feel wired or jittery, you may be overdid it. If you feel calm and clear, that might have been the sweet spot for you. Co-plunging is not about proving you're, that you're tough, it's about training your body to shift gears from stress to recovery, from uh, tension to relaxation. 
And this benefit is just as beneficial for women as it is for men. So let us just try to understand the response, the initial cortisol response. Upon the first exposure to cold water, the body undergoes this acute stress response, activating the sympathetic nervous system, like I just told you. This leads to a temporary increase in cortisol levels. So this is the hormone associated with stress. This response is part of the body's natural mechanism to handle sudden um, environmental uh, changes. And it needs to go up a little bit, especially if you're new to this, because the body is like, ah, alert, oh no, uh, is she dying? <laughs> but you're not. Interestingly, with repeated and consistent exposure to cold water, the body's response starts to evolve. You are adapting. Studies have shown that regular cold water immersion can lead to a decrease in baseline cortisol levels. So over time, indicating improved stress resilience and a more balanced autonomic nervous system. So your stress system is actually decreasing. So meaning that you can actually tolerate more stress and that your cortisol levels would be lower than it was from the beginning. Very cool. And that is why you can use this as a way to stress down. So let's try and bring this all together. So cold plunging does cause a short term cortisol spike if you are new to this, but it's temporary and followed by a recovery state. As you adapt, research shows that the spike in cortisol decreases um, over time and when you adapt to it and then it's not there anymore. So long term, it can help reduce the baseline cortisol levels and improve our nervous system resilience. So more stressed down over time, it's a journey. If you are in burnout or extreme stress, don't force it. Uh, rest first and then introduce cold gently. Use short exposures, focus on the breath and think about cold plunging as a nervous system uh, training uh, tool. It's a tool for you. And most importantly, this applies to women too. And it's not despite uh, your biology as a woman, but because of it, we can handle it. The nervous system is actually trainable. Just like weightlifting builds physical strength, cold plunging done right builds nervous system strength. Embracing the cold water immersion very wisely, whether you are a man or a woman, Cold water immersion offers uh, numerous benefits, including enhanced mood, improved stress resilience, and um, a better autonomic balance. While the initial exposure may trigger a temporary like cortisol increase when you start this uh, journey, um, with, with the consistency in practices, it leads actually to adaptation, resulting in a reduced baseline cortisol levels and a more robust uh, stress uh, response system. Importantly, these benefits are accessible to both men and women, I keep saying this, and with no evidence suggesting that women are at a disadvantage regarding cortisol response to cold exposure, or that they, um, or that they should not do cold water immersion at all. As with any wellness practice, I always say start gradually and adjust based on your individual needs and your circumstances, of course. Thank you for listening.